Hey folks, in this episode I'm going to show you how to make this tripophobia animation loop. It's pretty gross, so without further ado, let's get to it. So the first thing I'm going to do is open up Blender. I'm going to select everything and I'm going to hit delete. We're going to start with a blank canvas here. I'm then going to hit shift A, add mesh and we'll go for plane. I'll then tab into edit mode. I'm going to right click and I'm going to select subdivide. I'll then open up this subdivision menu here and I'm going to type in 15 for 15 cuts. I'll then close this menu. I'll then hit I for inset and then I hit I again for inset individual faces something around about there perhaps I then hit numpad 1 I'm going to hit E hold down control and we're going to drag it on the z-axis to around about there I'm then going to hit shift D to duplicate the bottom faces here so we've got bottom faces I then hit P to separate those faces by selection I then tap out of edit mode now we've got this mesh here and this mesh here so with this mesh I'm going to hit numpad 1 to go into front view I then go into x-ray view I'll tab into edit mode and I'm going to hit number 1 for the vertice select I'm then going to select all the vertices hit E Z hold down control and we'll drag it up to round about there I then hit control I to invert the selection and over here on your data tab I'm going to add a vertex group and assign those vertices to that group there with the weight of one I then tab out of edit mode let's just get out of x-ray view with this object selected I'm gonna hit control 2 which will add a subdivision surface at level 2 alternatively you just go to your modifiers add modifier generate and click subdivision surface we set the viewport for level 2 and the render for level 4. I'll then hit Z, shade smooth. For this other object, I'm going to do the same. Add modifier, we'll go to generate and subdivision surface. We set it at level 2 for the viewport and 4 for the render. I'm going to hit Z, shade smooth. I'm then going to add another modifier. So I click add modifier, we go to deform and we'll choose displace. We'll then click new to add a new texture. We'll click this button to go to the texture tab and we'll change it from image or movie to clouds and then we can change the scale to one for now I'll then go back to my modifiers I'm going to change the coordinate system from local to object I'll then add an object so shift a empty and we'll go for sphere now with that displaced object selected we're going to choose the object which will be empty so now if I grab that empty hit G you can see that the displacement is mapped to the object okay let's just select that object we'll change it from normal to Z so now I choose that vertex group I've made a bit of a mistake. I added the vertex group at the bottom and not the top, so we can change that quickly. So I'm going to mute this modifier. I'll mute this modifier. I'll then hit numpad one to go into front view. I'll tab into edit mode. We'll enable x-ray view. We'll box select all of these bottom vertices. We'll go to our vertex data. We'll remove that from the vertex group and then hit control I to invert. And then we'll assign the tops to the vertex group. So now if I go back into my modifiers, we'll re-enable these and then I'll choose that vertex group. So now the tops are displaced and not the bottoms. Maybe we'll turn the strength down to 0.25. Just grab this empty. Yep, I'm kind of happy with that. So let's select this object. we we'll drag this up to the top and we'll select this object so now I want this to wrap around a curve so in order to do that we're going to use the curve modifier so we'll go add modifier we'll go to deform curve we'll then add the curve so that's shift a add curve and then we'll choose circle we'll then reselect this object here and we'll choose that circle as the curve object we're going to have to change the axes until we've got the correct axes in my case it's on the y axis we'll do the same for this object here add modifier deform and we'll go to curve we'll drag the curve above the subdivision surface but below the displacement we'll then add that curve object which is the bezier circle and it was on the y axis okay it's all in order so now with this curve circle i'm going to hit s i'm just going to scale it down to maybe around about there excellent and with this empty which is the displacement empty i'm going to animate this now so i'm going to set my end frame to frame 240 i'll then skip to frame one and with the empty selected i'm going to add a keyframe on the z rotation i'll then skip to the last frame I'll skip one more frame and then I'll type in 360 and we'll add a keyframe there. By default, the animation type will be Bezier. It will start off slow, it will speed up and then it will slow down towards the end. We don't want that, we want a consistent speed. So over your timeline or your graph editor, so over your timeline or your graph editor you just hit T and you choose linear. Now we've got a consistent speed. I'll just change this back to my timeline. Now I'm going to select these inner nodules, toggle off overlays and I hit play so we can see the speed of what's going on. So maybe I want this to go a bit faster. So what I'll do is I'll go to my displacement here. I'll click this tab where the texture is. Maybe I'll reduce the texture to 0.5. 
and they're moving a bit faster now. Excellent. We could even possibly change these instead of poking out on the z-axis. We could change it to normal and then they'll pop out like balls. I think I prefer the look of that. So I'm going to go with that look, kind of giving it the illusion that they're inflating. Maybe I can change the mid-level and I'll reduce the strength to something around about there. Maybe a bit less, maybe a bit more. So you just have to find a value that you're happy with. I'm going to go for something like that. So if we want this to be a seamless loop, we're going to have to animate these values here. So let's say on frame 15, we'll add a strength of 0.25 and a mid-level of 0.25. And then on frame 225, we'll add a keyframe on the strength and mid-level at 0.25. But then on frame 1, we'll add a strength of 0 and we'll add a keyframe there. And then on frame 240, the last frame, we'll give a strength of 0 and we'll add a keyframe there. So now if I push play, it kind of should be an endless loop. Okay, I'm happy with that. So now let's add the camera into the scene. So I'm going to turn on my overlays again. I hit Shift C, Numpad 7. Let's go into top view. Shift A, add, and we'll go for camera, camera. If I hit Numpad 0, it will go into camera view. Alternatively, you can go to view, cameras, active camera. With the camera selected, I'm going to hit 90 on the X axis, and then I'm going to drag it on the Y axis backwards to maybe, I don't know, negative four. I'm going to go to my camera settings. I'm going to set the focal length to 50 mil. So then I can go back to my object data settings and I'm just going to drag the camera a bit closer, maybe to something like that. So now with my camera on the Z axis, set it to negative 0.5. I'm going to add a keyframe there and then I'll skip to the last frame and skip one more frame. So it's on frame 241. And then I'm going to type in 0.5. So now it should loop. So if I click here, push play, I'm just going to see if this loops. Okay, we've got the same problem with the animation speeding up and going slow. Over your timeline, with all your keyframes selected for your camera, I'm going to hit T and we'll choose linear. So now it should be a consistent speed. Now to give it a bit more spice, I'm going to hover over the top left hand corner here till I see this crosshair. I'll drag it across and then I'm going to change this to graph editor. Just drag this across, give it a bit more space, skip back to you on frame one. And then for the X location, we're going to add a keyframe here. And then going to open up this object transform, I'm going to then select the X location keyframe, N, to open up this panel. We'll choose modifiers and I'm going to hit noise. So now when I push play, as you can see, it's animating left and right to the noise on the X axis. Let's just change the scale a bit to maybe five and I'll change the strength to 0.05. Maybe I'll give it a bit more depth as well for just a little bit more shake. Now the key to making this loop, we have to use this restrict frame range. So we wanna start on frame one, we wanna end on frame 240. We want to maybe blend in over, let's say 30 frames and blend out over 30 frames. We can now close this panel here. So I'm going to hover my cursor in the top left until I see the crosshair. I'll drag it across and let go. So that's the animation so far. Right, let's get on with materials. So I'm just going to drag this down. I'm going to take my cursor to the bottom left here until I see the crosshair. I'm then going to drag it up and I'll change this to shader editor. So we're going to need some lights in the scene before we can see the materials. So I'm going to hit Shift A, add light, and we'll go for area light. I then hit numpad 3 for side view, and I hit R to rotate by 90 degrees, which is on the x-axis, negative 90. I then hit G, Y, we'll just drag this across to round about there. I hit numpad 1 to go into front view, and then I'll toggle x-ray view on. I'll go to my light data settings here. I'm going to change it from square to rectangle, on the Y axis, I'm going to take it to maybe 4 meters. On the X axis, I'm going to take it to 4 meters as well. So I'm going to change the color to blue. Go into rendered view. X ray off. We don't want to see that. I'll turn up the power to maybe 5000 watts. Okay, we've got a bit of rim light going there. Numpad 7 to go into top view. I'm going to hit Alt D, which creates an instance. And I'll drag it across, holding down Control to around about there then maybe RZ45 minus. So that's rotating it by 45 degrees on the Z axis. 
And the reason I created an instance of this and not a full duplicate, because if I change the value of this here, it will also change the value of this. They're kind of linked. So now I'm going to create another instance by hitting Alt D, hold down Control, and I'll drag it down to around about there. I'm then going to hit R, Z, holding down Control to snap it to the grid. So it's pointing in 45 degrees on the opposite direction. Now if I go to camera view, go into rendered view. This is in cycles, by the way, you can use EV if you like. I'm going to turn the strength down to 1000 watts. Maybe I'll turn it down a bit more, 250 watts. Okay, I'm happy with that. Let's add another lamp into the scene. Again, I'm going to use an area light. Go into top view. I'm not going to hit Alt D. I'm going to hit Shift D, hit Escape. So now this is its own lamp. It's not connected at all. I then hit G, Y and hold down Control, snap it to the grid. R, Z, 1, 8, O. So now it's pointing the opposite direction. On the color wheel, the opposite to blue is orange. So I'm going to choose orange for this one. Now, if I go into rendered view, we should have orange at the front, blue at the sides. Change the strength down to maybe 25 watts for this. Okay, I'm kind of happy with that. So now with this object selected, I'm going to add a new material. We'll keep the material simple. I'm going to turn the roughness all the way up and maybe I'll set it to a nice dark color, something around about there. Okay, and with the nodules inside, I'm going to add a new material. Maybe I'll turn the overlays off for this. And I'm going to set it to metallic with a roughness value of maybe 0.333. Maybe I can turn this material up a bit. So choose something that you like. I'm going to select my camera. And then I'm going to hit Shift S, cursor to selected. And then I'm going to hit Shift A, add. And we'll go for light. And we'll go for spotlight. I'll then hit numpad 3 for side view. I'm going to hit R, hold down control. And we're going to rotate that by 90 degrees. Hit numpad 1 to go to camera view. Go into rendered view. And I'm going to change the size of my spotlight to maybe something around there. I might even select this object and make the surface a bit darker. That means I'm going to have to change my area light so it's a bit brighter. This one here, maybe 50 watts. And my spotlight, I'm going to change to 50 watts going to be enough. Maybe 100 watts. Okay, so it's on 100 watts. I'm also going to change the blend to 0.5. I'll change the spot size to 20 degrees. Let's just go into look dev view. I'm going to tab this button here. We'll go scene world and scene lights. So now we just get a preview. So with the spot selected, shift left click select the camera and hit control P and we'll set parent object to keep transform. So now if I move the camera, the spotlight's going to follow along. So with my spotlight selected, I'm going to go to this object data panel here and then on frame one we're going to add two keyframes on the x and one on the z i'll then hit numpad zero to go into camera view i'll go up to the top left until i see my crosshair i'll drag this across and we're going to select the graph editor so with the spot selected we'll open up the object transform for the x and z i'm going to select x I'm going to add a modifier and we'll add a noise modifier i'll just go into preview mode so as you can see moving left and right maybe i'll turn the strength up to four and the scale to 10 maybe the scale could be 25 and the strength 2.5 or a scale of 15 again i'm going to restrict the frame range so we start on frame one we end on frame 240 we blend in over 30 frames and blend out over 30 frames i'm then going to hit this button here which copies that modifier i'll then select the z location i'll hit this button here to paste it and all we're going to do is change the offset to just a random number. I can now close this window up here. So I'll take my cursor to the top left of this window till we see the crosshair. I'm going to left click, drag it across and let go. So let's just see what we've got so far. I think I'd prefer it if these nodules moved a bit faster. So with these nodules selected, I'm going to go to my modifiers. I'm going to change the texture by clicking this button here. Maybe I'll set it to 0.25. They should move a lot faster and a lot more erratic. Maybe I can change the color of my spotlight. So I'll select my spotlight. I go to the light data and I'm going to change it to sort of a yellowish tinge. Maybe this shell could be a different color, a nice dark color. Turn the roughness up to maybe 0.75. Change the area brightness for the orange one to 250 watts. Okay, I'm kind of happy with that. It's always important to save your file. I recommend going to file, save as, and then save it as subscribe thanks folks you legends 
So now there's just one thing left to do, and that's to render it. So we choose this option here, the output, choose a file location where you want to save your file. For cycles, I'd definitely go for an image sequence in case it crashes. It doesn't matter so much with Eevee because it renders a lot quicker. I'm going to set my file type to PNG and RGB, 16-bit, and then I'll go to my render settings here. we we'll go to light paths. I'm going to turn off reflective and refractive caustics. We don't need those. we we'll go to sampling. I'll set the noise threshold to 0 0.025 and maybe max samples 256 should be sufficient for this tutorial and then it's just a case of hitting control F12 and that will render out your image sequence. So that's the tutorial in a nutshell. I hope you found use from this. Have a great day, level up and thanks for watching.